This is the first fight where an artificial intelligence judge had been used in boxing. Heavyweights Alexander Usyk and Tyson Fury fought in December, and while AI didn't decide the result, organizers said it made the fight fairer. Now, Dr. Cameron Maroof is developing artificial intelligence to detect concussion amongst boxers. The tech is still in its infancy, but the team thinks it could be a game changer. We've created an application uh, which tracks um, the eye, the pupils um, of, of the users to really identify the onset of concussion. And the whole idea really for us was to make it non-invasive uh, and to create a tool that's accessible in, in a sporting context. How does this technology work? How does the artificial intelligence tell when there's a concussion? The algorithm has learned to identify that if a person is following the motions correctly, if they're able to identify the blind spots correctly, um, whether they are showing signs of concussion or not. Because if somebody has uh, experienced concussion, then often that cognitive ability to follow a straight line, a moving line, or identify things moving in your blind spot uh, becomes impaired. Studies suggest that most professional boxers will suffer a brain injury in their career, which can increase risks of a host of diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Boxers are just like warriors, if you know what I mean, like they don't know what they're really doing, you know, like the harm that they're doing to themselves and no one's going to quit, no one's going to throw a towel in and say like we don't want to fight in this situation anymore, they're just going to go till the end. So sometimes they need things like that to be brought in to stop from really harming themselves. While boxing is governed by a strict set of rules that aim to protect fighters, injury can happen at any time. It's the green line here is representing the ball position and the purple line is the eye tracking. It's pretty much in sync, both in terms of how long it's taking for the participant to see the change in the position, as well as how precisely they are following the movements. We could see this across the board here. However, if we then move on to a case of obvious concussion, you can see they are very different in terms of the tracking of the eye, the positioning of the ball, so they're not clearly seeing the ball, and how long it's taking for them to respond to any changes. If you saw these results, how worried would you be? Very worried. You know, even though there are milliseconds uh, a difference, in every single one of these tests we found, there's huge discrepancies and a difference between the ball movement and how long it's taking for them to respond and essentially that's why we have those six tests to kind of give us a broader perspective on um, the likeliness of this being a serious concussion compared to maybe a minor concussion or, or kind of minor trauma. If a boxer is knocked out as a result of a blow to the head or they're diagnosed with a concussion by the ringside doctor they're suspended from boxing for 28 days. If the tech picks up a concussion, boxers may have to pull out of upcoming matches. Callum, who recently retired from boxing, isn't sure if it's something he would have wanted to use if early detection meant he couldn't fight. It's not just also for a bit of glory, but also you've got, you've got to pay the bills. The people, it's their full-time career and they put that much into it. You can't just, if you've sold them 100 tickets that's at, at 40 pound a piece, you can't just turn around and say, oh no, I'm not boxing now. In a boxing match, doctors watch closely, but in training, there is no checks, meaning concussion could be building at any time. Callum and Khalid tested out the technology post-sparring to see their results. So we'll just bring up Callum's results, and pretty much, as we can see here, it's clear to see consistency across the board. In general, across the six tests, no signs of concussion, and pretty much clear for us to see that he's, um, he's doing pretty well. We've got Carla's results. Could you let us know how is he? So pretty good signs. Mm -hmm. um, so as we could see here, there's consistency between the ball position and the eye tracking, both in terms of the position and also how long it was taking Khalid to respond um, to the movements and not a right lot to worry about. With the early concussion detection, do you think that's something that boxers would trust and heed or do you think it's something that they would want to kind of press through? I'm sure there'd be some boxers that would have some complaints if they did this new test and it said, oh no, you're not fit to box anymore or, or you shouldn't be having this fight. I'm sure there'd be some that I know personally I'd have complained, but now looking back at it, I'd have gone, 
well, probably a good job that that did happen. Some boxers probably do come into their professional fights and they're not like 100% there, like uh, whether they've suffered um, concussion in, in their training. There's things being done, but there needs, to be, there needs to be more. What we really want to do is to scale this so it, it can be utilised in competitive um, boxing matches, be it amateur boxing or professional boxing as well. And of course, that's boxing. There are a host of other sports that could benefit from this tech.